It's the day after the night before and the Derby Day defeat doesn't feel any better, nor will it for some time. Manchester United were outclassed by a basically flawless Manchester City team who showed just how big the gap is between Man City and Man United right now. Now the result wasn't a surprise at all, but it doesn't make it any easier to take. But after that defeat, there are so many questions that we could ask. But the question I want to focus on is a conversation or a debate between Graeme Souness and Gary Neville that happened on Sky Sports after the full-time whistle. In a heated debate, Graeme asked Gary whether or not he felt Jose Mourinho was getting the best out of his squad at Manchester United. Now, what I'm going to do is break down the argument between the pair, give my own points as to whether I think they're right or wrong. So let's get into it. Here's the video. Real question, the manager. Any manager going into a football club is given a group of players. The question you as a Man United supporter have to ask yourself is, is the manager, is the coaching staff getting the best out of the group of players at Man United? It's a simple yes or no, what is it? I don't know. You don't know? No, You've watched know. that game of football today and you, I... you, as a Man United supporter, you think that is acceptable? No, I don't think it's acceptable in any way, shape or so, form. So I... I think Graham Souness has kind of cornered Gary Neville on this one. I think it's an obvious answer. No, Jose Mourinho hasn't got the best out of his Manchester United squad, but Neville sits on the fence with this one. Somebody who's normally so objective, I don't think he's objective in this regard, because you know United fan will argue that Mourinho is getting the best out of this Manchester United squad. You look at the players this season, yes, you've got Martial's in great form, his best form since Louis van Gaal. Lindelof is now playing his best football since he's joined the club. Uh, Luke Shaw's having a fantastic season as well. Pogba, he's controlling games when he plays. Ashley Young stepping in and doing a job at right back. But there are so many other players in that squad who you would say are not performing that well this season. Romelu Lukaku, especially in comparison to how he was last year. Marcus Rashford, David De Gea, Nemanja Matic, Ander Herrera, Jesse Lingard, Alexis Sanchez, Eric Bailly. There are so many more players in this squad this season that are underperforming in comparison to those who are playing well. And that's the point that Souness is trying to make and a point I think Souness is right about. Now Neville does know the answer and the answer is no that Mourinho isn't getting the most out of his squad but he chooses not to say that. He doesn't want to add extra pressure on Jose Mourinho because he is a supporter of Mourinho. So I understand that position. But I want to say it how it is. And for me, the answer is a definite and resounding no. I think Souness is right in this one. On to the next point. So I'll come back to the question but, again. But Do you Greg, feel but I'm asking he's you, getting the best... But Graham, I'll ask you the players. question. Who would he have put in midfield today out of the players that he's well, got that would have improved it. So now, I don't think that Gary Neville has done himself any favours here because I feel there was quite a lot that Jose Mourinho could have done to improve that midfield. You look at the bench. Manchester United had Fred on the bench. Fred, who is a new £50 million central midfield Brazilian signing that Jose Mourinho himself signed. A player who last year for Shakhtar Donetsk against Manchester City was outstanding. But Mourinho chose to use Mauro and Fellaini instead of Fred. And what makes that situation and decision, I suppose, even worse is the fact that after the game, Mourinho admitted that Fellaini wasn't even fit to start the game. He's important for us in many aspects of, uh, of the game. Um, because if he didn't play, we had to play Fellaini. Fellaini was not ready to play for 90 minutes. Uh, I can just imagine when the result was 2-1, to bring a fresh, a fresh Fellaini to the pitch, I think they would be in big, big trouble. But when the result was, was to one and uh, we had that final uh, push, was the moment Fellaini was doing an incredible effort to stay on, on the pitch, no fresh at all, risking his, uh, his injury and his condition and giving everything to the team. But clearly one thing is, is to bring a fresh Fellaini and another thing is to play him for 90 minutes in, in this match. So, yes, for different reasons, we miss Paul. But that doesn't mean that with Paul we, we, we win the game. So it's not, um, it's not an excuse. What are you thinking if you're Fred seeing that interview from Jose Mourinho? Hearing your manager say that he preferred to use a semi-fit, very static, tall, not ball-playing central midfielder over you up against the Premier League's best ball-playing central midfielder, Bernardo Silva, David Silva and Fernandinho, who, even though he's a defensive midfielder, is still a very good ball-playing player. Fred could have offered so much more to that midfield than Maro and Fellaini could have, even if Fellaini was 100% fit, 
he still wouldn't offer the movement and the dynamism that Fred could have offered in that midfield. And that is a point that Gary Neville decides to overlook and a point I really feel Neville is wrong about. And it's not just Fred, because United also have Matter on the bench. If United wanted to play possession-based football, Matter was perfect for that. Sure, you know, United would have been weaker in defensively midfield. But the reason that Fellaini played over Matter is because Mourinho looked at Matic and said, look, he's not out of form, but he still plays Matic. So to try and cover up those weaknesses, Mourinho put Fellaini in to try and make United more defensively stable in midfield. But it, it didn't matter because David Silva, Bernardo Silva just played around our midfield anyway. So Fellaini offered absolutely nothing. If Matic was in the sort of form that he showed at the start of his career at Manchester United, when he was playing alongside Pogba in the midfield too, I reckon Mourinho would have started Matic because Matic was brilliant at that point. But now he's just, he needs a rest. It's obvious that Matic needs to be rested, yet Matic starts every week. Now Matic started against Juventus, so it's not as if Jose Mourinho hasn't used Matic at any point this season. He just decided to go for Fellaini over Matic and over Fred. And that's why I think... Gary Neville was really wrong in what he's saying there, that what could Mourinho have done to improve that midfield? I think he made decisions that were poor. And I think the midfield would have been a hell of a lot better with Fred or Mata, or even both of them. And that's overlooking the fact that Andreas Pereira wasn't even in the squad, the player who played at the number six role at the start of the season, but has since gone out of favour under Mourinho. I think Mourinho could have done a lot more to improve that midfield against Man City. And I think Neville's wrong on that one. On to the next point. No, 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 I'm not, no that's, 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 we're getting into, into specifics. Simple question. You look at the names that, that play for Manchester United, their group of players. Think of Sanchez, for argument's sake. Is he playing anything like he was at Arsenal? Answer is no. A big no. Now, Sunis isn't wrong here about Alexis Sanchez, and every Manchester United fan will admit that. In the last couple of games when he started against Bournemouth and against Juventus, he's offered a hell of a lot more in the number nine role than Romelu Lukaku has. But this is Alexis Sanchez, a player who we signed from Arsenal to score 20 plus goals a season. He was a ready-made, world-class striker at that point, And he hasn't delivered in that respect at Manchester United. And the point here that Sunis makes, for me, highlights a wider, bigger issue at Manchester United. And it's to do with the recruitment at the club. Look at the starting 11s of Manchester City and Manchester United on Sunday. Seven of Guardiola's signings started for Man City. Only two of Mourinho started for Manchester United, Nemanja Matic and Viktor Lindelof. Pogba and Delot were both injured. Neither of them could play. Fred was overlooked by Jose Mourinho. Lukaku has been bang out of form this year. Not 100% fit either, so that's why he was overlooked. Sanchez was overlooked. Lee Grant wasn't in the squad over Sergio Romero. Eric Bailly, I'm not sure whether he was injured or whether he was overlooked as well. And Henrik Mkhitaryan was sold by Mourinho. And it's at this point where you just have to put your hands up and admit just how good a job Guardiola has done at Manchester City in comparison to Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. Now, Guardiola has had a hell of a lot of money. So has Jose Mourinho. But it's the belief and the commitment that City's players showed against Manchester United that highlights just how in tune the players are with what Guardiola wants them to do. Now, Guardiola has always had elite squads. He's always had big budgets at big clubs. Nobody is saying that he hasn't. But you have to admire just how much he gets the players to buy into the system that he wants to create. I'm looking at that City eleven that played against Manchester United. I, I'm not sure if there, I saw a weakness there at all. That's got nothing to do with money. That's down to Guardiola's coaching. You know, you see Raheem Sterling running back and winning the ball multiple times in his own half. That sums it up, really. Every single one of these City players against United was on the same page that it made it almost impossible to play against them, impossible to break them down, and highlights just how good they are as a squad. And you just have to put your hands up at this point and admire it. And that's something which has always grown up United fans because just across the town in Manchester, United... Three years into Mourinho's tenure, we still don't really know our best start in 11. I don't think Mourinho does. And we still don't really know our start of play under Jose Mourinho. The start of play this season is play crap for the first 30 minutes and play better for the last 60. Which again, we probably did against Manchester City, but we came out 3-1 losers. Just how good Guardiola is doing at City 
is making the problems exacerbated with Mourinho at United, and that's a big issue. So looking overall at the video, you know, who is right between Graham Souness and Gary Neville in this scenario? If I'm being completely objective, I don't think Graham Souness said anything wrong. I don't think Mourinho's got the most out of his squad. I think any United fan would admit that as well. And I don't think it's a shame to admit that either. It's just the reality that's staring us right in the face. You know, Neville is staunchly defending Mourinho. And here for one of the only times I feel Neville is failing to be objective. I think Neville is blinded a little bit by bias and trying to stand behind Mourinho because after that game against City, you should just be saying it as it is. And United were just outplayed and outclassed everywhere. The result wasn't a surprise. The performance wasn't a surprise at all. But that needed to be discussed. And I don't think Neville did that correctly. And I think in this scenario, Souness is right. And that pains me to say that because Souness, nine times out of ten, is a complete dick. But he's right in what he's saying here. You know, would it have been different if Manchester United had Paul Pogba? Certainly United would have been better in getting the ball out of defence to midfield because we had no out. Every time we had the ball in defence, we had to try and knock it long because Fellaini, Herrera and Matic was not a ball-playing midfield that could play around with possession and then find the teammate on the ground. That's something that Mata or Fred or Pogba would have easily changed. But Pogba was injured. But I don't think Pogba would have changed that game completely. But, you know, there's hardly any reason to be positive from that result against City. But for me, there are a hell of a lot of reasons to still be positive of what we've seen from Manchester United and Jose Mourinho since that 3-2 win over Newcastle, and including that as well. I said there were six games for Jose Mourinho to prove that he's still got what it takes to try and make a success of this at Manchester United. And I've seen enough to still stand behind him, and the core support at Manchester United, I feel, still supports Mourinho. But the humbling defeats to Juventus at home 1-0, and Man City 3-1 away at the Etihad, have bluntly and obviously shown Manchester United fans just how far behind the level, the elite level, United are right now. We're level below. And that's the reality. The question United fans need to ask themselves is whether they truly feel that Mourinho is the right man to help us get up to that level again. Now, I still stand in support of Mourinho. I don't think anybody could come in right now wave a magic wand and solve these problems. And I've seen enough in these last six games from the players that there's something to offer from this United team this season. It's just going to be nowhere near that City team or Juventus. And that is a reality. Even if we beat Juventus 2-1 in Turin, we should probably have lost that 4-1. And I, I want to know from you, what do you think about this? Who is right between Graham Souness and Gary Neville? Is Jose Mourinho completely to blame for what's going on at Manchester United right now? Should he be getting more out of this squad? Let me know what you think in the comments below.